I got this Venus flytrap from my big box store and thought I'd do a video about how to take care of these. I chose this particular one because it was the healthiest looking one and not only that but it had a lot of little small plantlets that I knew I could divide out and since I was buying it mainly to divide and have multiple plants this is the one I chose. If like me you bought your Venus flytrap from a big box store or a questionable online dealer First thing you're going to want to do is get it out of the potting medium it's in. The reason for this is these Venus flytraps are often potted in a medium that is not appropriate, that contains nutrients and minerals. Or they are watered with tap water that contains nutrients and minerals as well. In their native habitat, these plants are in a very, very nutrient poor soil. With that being said, their roots cannot tolerate dissolved solids. They need to be planted in a mixture of either peat moss or cocoa choir and sand. Some sands contain clay, which is very, very rich in nutrients. You do not want that type of sand. You need to make sure it is a silica-based sand. And here I am using a mix of peat moss and sand. It's about a 50-50 mix. It doesn't necessarily have to be 50-50, it can have a little more sand than peat, it can have a little more peat than sand. It just needs to have a little bit of drainage and be able to absorb quite a bit of moisture. Now the next thing you need to make sure of is you need to make sure you're watering them only with distilled water. The best way to water these is to make sure you have a pot that has drainage holes, set it in a waterproof tray and fill the tray up with water. If you keep this plant inside, you can let the water in the tray be totally absorbed and wait a few days before you water it again. Just do not ever let the soil dry completely out. If you keep it outside, which I definitely recommend because these plants love a lot of light, you need to keep water in the tray at all times during the hot part of the summer. That brings us to lighting. These plants love light. They love a lot of light. They like to be in bright, full sunlight for 12 to 14 hours a day. If you keep them on a windowsill, you will definitely need supplemental lighting. If you just bought your plant, you probably need to put it on the north side of your house or a shady area for a few days to acclimate it to the light. You need to go out every day or two and move it a little further into the light. Doing it this way, you can slowly acclimate it to full sunlight over the period of about a week or two. Most people buy a Venus flytrap because they want to see it eat, and that's understandable because they're very interesting plants. That is also where a lot of people mess up and end up damaging or killing their plants. First off, the only thing that the Venus flytrap should ever eat is live insects. The first Venus flytrap I ever got, I killed pretty quick by feeding it hot dog. I was a kid, I didn't know any better. The problem with that is the plant cannot digest that type of meat. And not only that, but it tends to cause fungal or bacterial growth which will kill the traps. Now the traps will only open and close three or four times and then the leaf will start to die. Which brings us to the next issue. A lot of people cannot keep from triggering the traps. While it's fine to do it once or twice when you first get it just to watch it, do not make it a habit because every time that leaf closes, it uses energy. If the plant does not get a meal with that energy, it's just wasted energy and eventually it will kill your plant. If your plant is inside and it doesn't get a meal for a month or two, you probably need to start feeding it every two or three weeks to a month. If it's outside, you probably will not need to feed it at all because you'll notice that just about all the time every trap on the Venus flytrap is closed with a mill in it. These plants are very effective hunters. It's not uncommon if they're outside for the traps to always be closed with a mill inside of them. If this plant is kept outside, this often causes the traps to die back before the new growth comes in completely. Oftentimes, within a couple of weeks of putting this plant outside, you will notice it looks like it's dying. But as long as it has new growth coming in, the plant will be fine. The reason for this is the plant is still adapting to its outside environment. And it just hasn't had time to start growing that much yet. 
but with all the insects it has eaten it has plenty of nutrients and it should put on a lot of new growth and start growing a lot quicker. Most people consider these plants tropical plants or as indoor plants but really they are not. They are actually native to North Carolina and South Carolina. In their native habitat they are subject to very long hot humid summers and short mild winters where it does get below freezing but it does not stay below freezing very long at a time. If you live in zone 7 or 8 these plants can live outdoors all year long but they need to be in a larger container. If they are kept in a smaller container the roots risk freezing and dying from extended periods of cold more than if they're in a larger container. If you do live in zone 7 or 8, the best thing to do is to make a decently sized container bog garden. I'm not going to go into much detail on that here because it is the subject of a future video. These plants do require a dormancy period of about one month to two months during the winter time. During that time they will die back all the way to the ground and they will look dead. Next spring, if all goes well, they'll, it'll sprout up new growth. These plants can tolerate cold down to around 20 degrees Fahrenheit. If you live in an area that gets a lot colder than this or stays cold for extended periods of time, there are several options that you will have to do to keep your plant alive during the winter. If your plant's outdoors, some people have had success in zone 5 and 6 by putting down burlap over the entire container and then putting 6 inches of pine straw or other type of mulch over the soil. Since I live in zone 7b or 8a, I have no experience with this so I, I really cannot tell you anything other than it has been successful for some people. A more reliable method is to put it in a cold window sill or in an unheated basement as long as it doesn't get below 20 degrees and stay there for extended periods of time. If you do not have an area like that, there is one more option. You can uproot the entire plant Put it into a sealed container containing peat moss that's slightly damp and stick it into the crisper drawer of your refrigerator. You would leave it there for six to eight weeks, then pot it up and set it on a windowsill until the temperatures outside are good for it to be set outside. Oftentimes when the plant dies down in the winter, people throw it away thinking it was dead. But if they had just kept the plant and stored it in a, a proper way, it would grow next spring again and it would probably grow faster and more vigorously and maybe even bloom. One more mistake that people often make is they will try to fertilize their plant. This plant does not need any fertilizer. If you do fertilize it, you're likely to kill it. It gets all the nutrients it needs from insects. If you follow the cure instructions in this video, you're likely to have a Venice flytrap that will live for many, many years and will bloom and eventually make seed as well. Seed is one way you can propagate this plant, but if you use seed, it will not be true to the parent plant. If you have a really nice specimen, the offspring will not look exactly like the parent. There are a few other ways to increase the numbers of these plants that you have, one of which, and the easiest of which, is division. Over time, when the plant grows, it will form multiple rosettes of leaves. Each rosette of leaves will have its own root system and its own bulb or corm. As a matter of fact, often when you get the plant originally, it will have multiple rosettes already. You can see by this picture, I got about nine different plants. Six of them are doing really good. The other three are struggling, not sure if they're going to make it. But I'll at least have six plants from the one plant that I originally bought. Two other methods of propagating this plant is from cuttings, one of which is called leaf pullings. You basically take a leaf and you pull it off the plant making sure to get some of the white part of the corm attached to the leaf. You'll take that and put it in moist soil, put it in an area where it does not get direct sunlight and cover it to keep the humidity really high. You would do this usually in peat moss or maybe vermiculite. Another method of propagating this plant is by flower stalk cuttings. You basically cut the flower stalk down as low as you can without damage to the plant. Then you treat it just like a, a leaf pool. Like you will put it in damp uh, soil. When I say soil, I mean peat moss or something with no nutrients. And you'll leave it there and in six to eight weeks it will start to develop a root system and put up little plantlets. 
As these plantlets grow, they can eventually, when they get large enough, be potted up separately and you'll have multiple plants from one leaf pulling or one stem cutting. If you have any questions or comments about Venus flytrap, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will answer them to the best of my ability. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks. Bye. And uh, please share, like, and subscribe. Thanks. Thanks.